enlightenment acts as catalyst in the process of the enlightenment of the seekers the enlightenment of the master creates an indomitable energy and this energy acts as catalyst in the process of the enlightenment of the people around if you are surrounded by a wise person his awareness his understanding becomes a catalyst in the process of your wisdom whether embodied or unembodied the enlightened one has dissolved in existence then form and formlessness does not matter whether form or formless these acts as two feet or two wings or two hands just as two wings are necessary to soar in the sky two feet are necessary to walk two hands are necessary to walk so too for the enlightened one embodied or unembodied form or you can say form or formlessness both are necessary because the enlightened one has dissolved in existence like a drop merging in the ocean and then the ocean lends its magnanimity its splendor and cosmic oneness to the enlightened the mere presence of the enlightened one clears the path of inward journey remember mere presence of such a being clears the path of inward journey buddha represents the highest peak of consciousness buddha is the experiment in the totality of consciousness he represents the fruition of one's being or the blossoming as enlightenment buddha represents a totally different kind of spirituality pure and sub and buddhahood is the nature of the master buddha is considered to be the most godless yes yet most godly being ever walked on the earth he propounded the religionless religion where the dogmas creeds and belief system was not necessary instead it was pure religiousness never before this happened that someone spoke of human transformation in such profound yet uncontaminated way over the years each time the message of buddha overflowed the need was there to preserve the message in as many forms as may be possible but it never happened as time was not right subhuti asked will there be beings in the future people in the last time in the last epoch in the last 500 years at the time of the collapse of good doctrine who when these words of the sutras are being taught will understand their meaning will understand the truth the lord spoke do not speak the subhuti yes even then there will be beings who when these words of the sutras are being taught will understand their truth for even at that time subhuti there will be bodhisattvas and these bodhisattvas subhuti will not be such as have honored 
only one single buddhi for even at that time subuti there will be bodhi sattvas and these bodhi sattvas subuti will not be such as have honored only one single buddha nor such as have planted their roots of merits under one single buddha alone on the contrary subuti those bodhi sattvas who when these words of the sutras are being taught will find even one single thought of serene faith be such as have honored many hundreds of thousands of buddhas such as have planted their roots of merit under many hundreds of thousands of buddhas known they are subuti to the tathagat through his buddha cognition seen they are subuti by the tathagat with his buddha eye fully known they are subuti to the tathagat and they all subuti will beget an acquire an immeasurable an incalculable heap of merit therefore subuti listen well and attentively the buddha being the energy field that the enlightened ones have created shall continue to act as catalyst in the process of transformation of human consciousness the energy field of the masters is never destroyed simply needs to be decoded it acts as catalyst only you need to have the capability to connect to that energy field the buddha being the energy field that the enlightened one has created enlightened ones have created shall continue to act as catalyst in the process of transformation of human consciousness when the gates of heaven open for buddha he refused to enter until the entire existence sentient and insentient attains to enlightenment the indomitable energy of enlightenment shall continue to act as catalyst the indomitable energy of enlightenment shall continue to act as catalyst remember enlightenment is a realization not revelation when the flower blossoms it realizes its innerness mysteries of the unknown as beauty fragrance and splendor are released it is not divine revelation instead it is divine realization and the difference is immense indeed divine revelation means something objective that is being revealed to you it is as if god is revealed to you you see some god but you are separate from him and he is separate from you enlightenment is finding that there is nothing to find there is nothing to discover enlightenment is realization that there is nowhere to go it is an understanding that this is all life is perfect that this is it enlightenment is not an achievement instead it is an understanding that there is nothing to achieve and nowhere to go you are already that you are you are already there you have never been away you cannot be away from there god has never been missed maybe you have forgotten that is all 
maybe you have fallen into sleep god is not separate from us or from existence god is embedded in the entire existence in the blossoming of the flower in the chirping of the birds in the roaring of the ocean in existence i believe in a god who is creativity not creator creator is a noun and creativity is a verb god is rivering a master is rivering constantly growing overflow i do not believe in a god as a person instead i believe in godliness as a quality this is how buddha's book enlightenment therefore is divine realization you realize that you are god and in realization that you are god you realize that everything is godly everything attains to its fragrance only god exists and nothing else exists in the stones trees birds rivers mountains and the people whether they know it or not the same principle the same quality is hidden at the very center of every being enlightenment is becoming so full of light that you can see your own center and realize your godliness then you are embodiment then you are embodiment of a scriptural injunction isha permeates through the entire cosmos as the only cosmic energy isha vasya midam sarvam that consciousness permeates through the entire cosmos this makes a lot of difference when you consider god separate then you are only a puppet you can never be free how can you be free of the creator he created you and why did he create you at a certain moment not before why were you created a certain moment not before there is eternity in the past and the christianity says god created the world 4400 years before jesus christ and it must have been january 1st obviously but what had he been doing until then just sitting and doing nothing for the whole of eternity and then suddenly he creates this world not a great idea either a mess in 6 days god created the world and after 6 days he got so tired that he rested and he has been resting since then this is indeed a strange tiredness and it seems to be whimsical that suddenly he decided to create the world science has already proved that the existence is much older than 6000 years therefore you cannot depend on such a whimsical god tomorrow he may decide it is enough and decides to destroy it what can you do with a god who is a creator you are just in the hands of someone with a god who is a creator you are just in the hands of somebody else who can make or mutilate you then your freedom and your individuality both are meaningless frederick nietzsche is right to say god is dead and now man is free he is putting two things together 
is in sight. God is dead and now man is free. With God alive, man cannot be free. One cannot attain to maturity un until and unless your teacher, your elders are staying around you like a canopy. You know you can lean on to someone when the problem arises. Maturity comes when there is no roof on your head. You and you alone are there al along with your awareness. It is the awareness that you nourish each moment. There is no ready-made answers. Each circumstance is not repeated. Each situation is not repeated. Instead, each circumstance and situation comes in front of you as fresh. And you have to deal with that situation totally afresh, overflowing the awareness. It is wrong to say God is dead because God is not an object outside existence. So how can he be dead? He is not a creator. Instead, he is the innermost reality of the existence. Something that is embedded in the entire existence, in the, every fiber of the existence. He is eternal. He has always been here now and he will always be here. He is the sunshine in the rays of the sun. He is the music in the chirping of the birds. He is eternal. He has been, he has always been here now and he will always be here now. The Nietzsche is wrong to say that God is dead. When something is eternal, which is beyond time and space, which is beyond death and birth. This is why Nanak says in the beginning, in the first body, Adi Sach, Jugadi Sach, Adi Sach, that was truth in the beginning, and that is truth in the end. Is not that it is now, and it will not be tomorrow. Eternal means that was in the beginning, that is now and will always be whether the creation exists or not. That is the nature. Adi such, Jugadi such, Habi such, Nanak Hosi be such. A clear cut definition that was in the beginning that is and that is now and will always be. Even when there is dissolution, even when the entire creation is dissolved. When something is eternal, it is beyond death and birth. The process of creation did not end in six days. It is, is still going on. It is an ongoing process. This is evolution. But God has to be put aside. God has to be put inside it not outside of the creation but God has to be put inside it not outside it when you put God outside the world becomes dead and God becomes the dictator when God is inside part of the existence makes the whole of the life alive everything vibrant and pulsating that God is no longer a danger all those who consider enlightenment as divine revolution may have simply dreamt about it or have been hallucinating. It was an illusion and nothing else. Enlightenment cannot be a revolution. Enlightenment is the realization that I am not just a mortal. I am not material either. I am divine. I am ever-expanding consciousness. 
deep within my heart god is alive and what is happening in me is happening in everyone else too enlightenment is the realization that i am not just mortal i am not material either i am divine deep within my heart god is alive and what is happening in me is happening in everyone else too sentient and insentient the existential energy that pulsates within me permeates through the entire cosmos sentient and insentient there is difference between one who is enlightened and the other who knows what enlightenment is there is difference between one who is enlightened and the other who knows what enlightenment is the enlightened one has recognized his inner being that is why he is enlightened the enlightened one is enlightened because he has recognized his inner being that is why he is enlightened and the others are fast asleep but there is no qualitative difference those who are asleep may be awake tomorrow maybe they can wake up this very moment and in this eternity it does not matter whether you wake up today or tomorrow the only thing is that you wake up from your deep slumber today or tomorrow time does not matter there is no race that somebody will win the race and you will lag behind and in this eternity it does not matter whether you wake up today or tomorrow it does not matter at all the only thing that matters is that you wake up from your deep slumber you wake up early in the morning or late in the morning eternity is available you are free to choose when to wake up you are free to choose if you want to have a little longer sleep turn then turn over pull the blanket up and enjoy sleeping a little longer because it is god who is enjoying it certainly one day you will have to wake up do not be worried there is no need to disturb god if he wants to sleep a little longer and sooner or later and sooner or later you will wake up how long can you sleep there is a limit one day you have to wake up if you want to sleep late as happens on the weekends but there is a time there is a limit to sleep sometimes or the other sooner or later you have to wake up enlightenment is awakening from a deep sleep it is coming to consciousness from a state of unconsciousness it does not need any god outside enlightenment is awakening from a deep sleep it is coming to consciousness from a state of unconsciousness it does not need any god outside god outside is dangerous its implications are ugly because god outside means worshiping praising him praying to him going to the mosque the church the temple and the synagogue and engaging yourself in rituals all that is outside god outside will never allow you to enter within yourself your eyes are focused outside and there is no god outside you are looking onto an empty sky the essence of life is within you this very moment you can turn within yourself look into yourself no worship or prayer is needed all that is needed is a silent journey into your own this is meditation a silent pilgrimage to 
your own being. Indeed, meditation is silent pilgrimage to the inner. No worship and no prayer is needed. All that is needed is a silent journey to your own being. This is meditation, a silent pilgrimage to your own being. Indeed, meditation is silent pilgrimage to the inner. And the moment you find the center, you have found the center of the whole existence. The center is within you. And it is true. If you can find the center within you, you have found the center of the whole universe. And you can revolutionize this. Enlightenment is the essence of your being. Enlightenment is the essence of your being. It is your inner flower being.